All right, here you go, chaps. There's a, a demo of the Mr. FPGA. Now, eventually, uh, I'm going to rebuild this into an Amiga 500 case, but for now, it's just in the uh, Ghostbusters trap or whatever you want to call it. So, there you go, it comes up with the, uh, the backdrop. I haven't done all the arcade games yet, uh, all the consoles, but I've done pretty much all of the uh, retro computers. So you can see at the moment, that's pretty much all the cores that are available. Some of them aren't quite as described and some of them aren't complete yet. Like the uh, X68000 Sharp, that's not complete because uh, they haven't released the rest of the core yet, but most of them work. So I'll flip through some of the, uh, the ones you might know. There you go, Amstrad PCW. So you have to give it a disk to boot on. Okay, let's just boot up on CPM for now. And give it a quick reset. So even though you've got the buttons there on the top of the mister, you can pretty much do, well, you can do everything from the keyboard. F12 gets you into the menu and you can do it all from there. So you can set it if you want to automatically boot up on one core. So if you put it in an Amiga case, for example, you could boot straight up onto an Amiga core and then press F12 to select a different core if you wanted to. Okay, there you go. As a reminder how slow some retro computers really were. It's only because this is copying copying files into the uh, the RAM disk, usually it'd be a bit quicker. Okay, there you go. So, there's CPM, Amstrad version 1.5 flavour. Okay, and if we hit F12 to get back into the menu. So, it, the Amstrad PCW will happily play games and whatever else, loco script. Um, the Amstrad em emulator, that's for the CPC, so it should come straight up as a, there you go, a 6128. And from there, you can load up disks, or you can load a tape file, which in this case is a CDT, or you can even load up CPM on it, if you really want to. Okay, so, and then next goal we've got. AO486, so this is basically a 486 PC. The image running on there at the moment is Windows 98, which is about as far as you can push it. to the late 90s so because this is yeah, teaching you to suck eggs I'm sure but because this is an FPGA it's essentially building the um, the CPU and the rest of the custom chipsets where we're applicable like in the case of the Amiga um, onto effectively a, a blank processor so it's not software emulation which means that the timing is much more accurate, um, which is quite noticeable when you compare, uh, I don't know, something that's that's where timing is critical, like a you know an arcade game or something, to software emulation running on, let's say, the Pi or any other machine for that matter. Um, and initially, it seemed like the software emulation was fine until I tried running the same same games and same apps on the FPGA, and it's like chalk and cheese. There is no comparison. Once you've gone, once you run them on the FPGA, you, you probably won't want to go back to software emulation. The only thing I find software emulation is useful for is converting disk images and things like that. Anyway, there you go, Windows 98, and uh, you can even get it on the internet if you want. It's um, the serial port is mapped to uh, a PPP listener on the uh, on the underlying platform, which is basically a Linux machine. So uh, it's it's not fast, but it works. But the machine itself, you can see, is, is quite responsive. So, OK. 
because it's windows will shut it down properly before we quit the core otherwise next time it will force me to scan the disc so some machines need you to press the option key or windows key or whatever you want to call it and f12 others don't okay and i've got an apple two there's an apple one there as well but why would you bother right so we'll just boot that up on apple dos which also includes basic but um i've tried some games out on it the battle chest will work quite happily it's a bit clunky but it works there you go okay and archie is archimedes Okay, now some calls are better developed than others. Some have got good support for floppies, uh, floppy drives, hard drives, CD-ROMs, albeit virtual using ISO images or whatever. Um, joystick support, unfortunately, joystick support on the Archie core is a bit lacking and there's no real I.O. on it, but the, uh, the core itself is very responsive. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and it will happily play pretty much all the games that I've got here when you get in but to get the joystick working you have to just map them map the joystick to uh, to keys uh, with a button key remap and that works fine for most apart from Xenon 2 which is really annoying because actually the version of Xenon 2 on the Archimedes is infinitely superior to some other platforms but there you go Okay, and sorry, ST. Which will uh, skip the memory test on, we'll be sat there forever. Okay, there you go. And if you had a, a floppy in the drive by uh, inserting it with the, uh, the menu, then it would boot up on that instead. Okay, BBC Micro. You can configure this as a BBC A, B, Master, whatever you want, and that's just got a, a virtual disk image, a VHD file, for the, uh, pretty much every game that was ever released for the uh, BBC. Okay, Commodore 16, Commodore 64, show you the 64 quickly. Now some cores have got tape support, others don't, it just depends. And with the um, D10 Nano, or Mister if you prefer, or the FPGA, there is actually uh, an audio in, um, so you can load from real tapes if that's what you want to do, or you can just load from tape images. Okay, Coco 2, which as we established previously, can be run as basically a Dragon 32 or Dragon 64. And uh, what else? a few I don't know here, but uh, Mac Plus. Now this is just running Mac OS 605, so it's uh, you can't do much with it, but you can run up to 7.5, I think. I'll say 6, 6.0.5 is what it's currently running. Okay, here you go. That's about it. There's nothing installed on it, but obviously you can uh, you can install whatever you need to. Okay, and next core, All right, Mini Mig. So this is the Amiga. This is probably the most developed core. Takes a few seconds to boot up. And there you go. So I've got an IP stack on here so you can you can browse the web with it. Although <laughs> it's going to be a bit lacking when uh, when it comes to anything that requires certificates or 
<laughs> flash your yeah, right or anything of that ilk but you know it works for AmiNet Google at a push okay MSX multi-comp yeah whatever Auric Atmos there you go there's a few flavors that you can configure it as Commodore PET Sinclair QL with the latest Minerva ROM set. Okay, there you go. And that's got hard drive support as well. With the, uh, the latest ROM set, so there you go, and Sam Coop, interesting one, it's basically kind of a Spectrum clone, but I'm not sure why you bother, TRS-80, VIC-20, Monk Martin ZX Spectrum, which you can configure as pretty much any flavour of Spectrum. Okay, ZX81 and ZX Spectrum Next as well. So you don't even need to buy a Spectrum Next, you can just run it on here. They've, they've basically ported a call because the Spectrum Next is also running on FPGA. There we go. The benefit of the Spectrum Next is you can change the, uh, the clock speed all the way up to a whopping 28 megahertz but considering the original spectrum is only 3.5 megahertz that's quite a boost in performance so there you go that's pretty much everything for now uh probably be a bit more impressive once it's uh it's moved into the amiga 500 case and it'll actually look like a real computer as opposed to a ghostbusters trap but uh there you go cheers guys see ya